Our people are scattered. Like stars in the galaxy. What are we? What do we stand for? I feel like most Star Wars fans grow up going like this, like pretending to use the Force. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I Especially at the supermarket. Entering supermarket. Yes. <laughs> yes. 100%. Yes, yeah. Yeah. exactly. And because I love the Force so much, I wanted to start off by asking you guys about it. How has Grogu's relationship with the Force changed since season two? And is it still going to be like a strong part of his identity? Well, he's now trained with Luke Skywalker for a certain amount of time. And we know that he already had some really good natural ability. And there's also stuff that he learned before long ago that uh, part of it he remembers, part of it he doesn't. So there is an unlocking of that. So as we meet uh, Grogu this year, he definitely is not the same, you know, not in the same position that he was where it was a little sporadic. Now, because the force, using the force is partially about ability, but a lot of it's about training and about learning to control it. Mm -hmm. And so as he gets older and more mature, as he becomes more acclimated and more comfortable in the relationship with the Mandalorian, and as he received training from the greatest teacher around, we're going to see that he is evolving. Dave, I wanted to ask you about the Dark Saber because it's this weapon that a lot of us don't know about. And the coolest part to me is that it attunes to the user's emotional state, which is so dope. Um, can you kind of quickly explain the significance of the Darksaber in the Star Wars universe and how it relates to Din Djarin's search for redemption? Sure. The Darksaber is something that George Lucas created way back when we were working on Clone Wars together. We had the great actor. character. Yeah, John's <laughs> character, Pre Vizsla, who was a Mandalorian, uh, was fighting Obi-Wan Kenobi and had a what we would call a vibroblade a different kind of sword fighting a lightsaber. And George thought about that and said, no, we shouldn't have a, another sword that can compete with a lightsaber. So he invented the Darksaber, something that was unique uh, in Star Wars, something that had been created long ago and taken from the Jedi Temple. And then we expanded its lore to include the idea that it was a sword created by the first Mandalorian who was trained in the ways of the Jedi and someone that could kind of be a crossover between the two um, types of training and knowledge. And the, so the dark save is really unique. There hasn't been another blade that's negative like that. It's also unique property is unlike a lightsaber, which is a rounded beam of energy. It's a very flat blade of energy. So it has a much sharper, more dangerous edge, as you could say in a lot of ways, and it feels more volatile. So I think all of that is just to make it a story thing about Mandalorians themselves and how warlike they are and how they've had a lot of conquest in their history. But like anything, in order to wield it, you have to have training, you have to have discipline. You can't just wield it, you know, through pure might. It's going to, you know, not work for you as well. It's like Excalibur that way. You have to be the, the once in future king if you're going to be able to pull the sword from the stone. So there are elements of that and we, how it falls from hand to hand is also becomes very important. And we've also seen that the strongest people, it seems even heavier to them. Mm -hmm. And the Mandalorian, we've seen him use it Jin Djarin use it, he's injured himself. It's not, it's, if anything, it's getting in the way because he's so good at every weapon. And then we saw uh, Paz Vizsla trying to use it after he grabbed it, and it seems to be a, a hindrance to most people. Mm -hmm. And even as far back as in Rebels, we saw training with it, seeing that it's heavy, sometimes it's heavy, and sometimes it's light, depending on if you're destined to use it mm -hmm. or if you have training. Yeah, or you're emotionally, where you are emotionally. And I love the high pitch of it. I mean, few weapons have like as long and storied a history as the Darksaber of Mandalore. I'm so excited for season three because we're finally getting a live action Mandalore. When yes. you were creating this world, what was so exciting about Mandalore and its culture that you were like so stoked to see on screen? Well, I love what they established in the Clone Wars where even when you first go there, it's a mess. It's, it's desert, it's dome cities because they've been fighting and fighting and fighting. And even though we catch them in a moment of peacefulness, uh, it's, that's an outlier to their history. And it seems that this warlike culture, as effective as they are when facing others, they fight each other internally as well. And I thought that that was a great metaphor of what, what a shortcoming that is, that you could be as strong as, you could be the most mighty civilization, but if you can't cooperate and get along, mm. you're vulnerable and ultimately doomed. So mm. it's an interesting cautionary tale that they established and we just we just built upon. Mm -hmm. How many Mandalorians are we going to get to see? <laughs> Is it more than more than we have before. More than normal, yeah, a few yeah. more than uh, normal. Uh, quite a bit. You know, thanks to you know, thanks to our ILM and also what we're able costumers. to film, <laughs> costumers, <laughs> and what we've established already. We we definitely um, 
felt that it was time for us to start putting some of those chess pieces on the board. We just alluded to it, and so now we're going to be culminating in many ways. Oh, it's so cool to see. I'm sure for you guys, it's so cool to see things going from the page to then like walking in and being actualized. Like I can't even imagine what that feeling it's is like. It's a bit like. surreal. Yeah, it's cool. it's probably so cool. Um, I wanted to know because I asked Pedro at D23 if he would ever want to see this series end with a film, and he said yes. That's a great idea, and if it isn't a conversation. Now it will be after today. And I wanted to know, I wanted to ask you guys the same question. I think part of what's nice about storytelling now is that the rules, there are no rules. I mean, before we started this, there was no, there wasn't the same kind of presence in the streaming ecosystem. You had Netflix films or you had films that were done for cable. But to have like a Disney, first Disney Plus show of this, of this scope gave us a lot of storytelling opportunities. And I think we've seen from other examples, I think you see with Marvel, how it goes back and forth, that, that you could move between both media, uh, there's definitely an opportunity. The question becomes, in this moment in time, about what the audience wants, mm -hmm. you know, how we apply our uh, efforts and our time, because both take a lot of time. We're able to bring the, the window of, of creating and delivering to about a year so that we could keep hitting the cadence of a television show. Well, with a movie, it takes quite a bit longer. And we have to make sure we have a great story that we could tell from the big screen. But certainly, uh, we're open to all possibilities, and we'll see where things go. I think the industry is going through transitions now, the entertainment industry, yeah. as well as you know what the fans want from Star Wars. And I think we're going to learn a lot now with not just this, but as Ahsoka comes out and Skeleton Crew, and we'll see how all of it works together, and we'll understand what uh, connects us best with our audience. Well, as a Latina, you mentioned Ahsoka. This is like the most popular part of cult pop culture, where I think a lot of us feel the most seen in between like Pedro and Diego and Rosario Dawson. You'd be excited to see Rosario because she's just great. I love her. Like it, we we couldn't have done it every day on set. I got to tell you, from morning to night, no matter how hard we're working. She is the, the force. She is the source of inspiration. Uh, and, you know, she's just the best. I can't. I'm so excited for people to see it because of her and what everybody's contributing. But, uh, yeah, you, you were right to be excited because of Ro. She's okay. a dynamo.